Today we're going to create uh, an open fronted uh, larder unit. So we've got uh, the uh, side panels there and then we've got the larder shelf pack and legs etc. Hopefully it should be in that box. First thing to do is to check that the uh, packaging is undamaged when you either receive it or when you pick it up off the shelves from the shop. Smaller pieces of damage like uh, that to the packaging where it is there. Probably not too much of an issue particularly when you're looking at the uh, end panels because these are really going to be mainly carcassing which will a lot of it will be hidden anyway. Uh, but just be careful that the uh, whatever's inside is not damaged and if it is just make sure you return it straight away and photograph the packages as you open them so as you can show any extra damage it's not created by you and you want a big flat clear space so as you can build your unit uh, what I tend to do is to open up the uh, cardboard packaging carefully don't uh, use a sharp knife uh, or don't use it in such a way that you're going to cut and damage the uh, door fronts or the side panels but you can spread the cardboard out on the floor and it will protect the uh, panels etc from any dust or grit or whatever. Conveniently on this one side where they've uh, joined the uh, packaging together gives you an opportunity to get your finger in and just pull that back carefully and hopefully you're not going to damage too much. And you thought that was some damage in there but it's not, it's the back panel sticking up between the two end or side panels. This uh, box with the uh, larder shelf pack in it actually came apart quite easily, just literally pull that flat back, I was only just holding a little line of glue and then just pull this carefully away, pull that back and then you've got access to all your shelving units. These bits here which look like packers are actually part of it so don't throw those away and also there's a box here which is full of all the goodies that help you fix the uh, units together so just make sure you pull those out and don't throw them away with the rest of the packaging otherwise you'll be back to square one and I know I'm a bloke but uh, and I don't read instructions but certainly when you're building flat pack furniture or kitchens do definitely read the instructions and follow the order recommended by the company that produce the items because then hopefully you should find everything works well so in the box there's these two little bits which we need to use but then there's also four shelves there's one I've just taken out there so there's one there two three four and those are the ones that have got no holes in so those are the ones you'll uh, fit into the unit once it's all constructed and they'll just slide in and fit onto the uh, shelf support brackets wherever you decide you want to put them. The other three, one, two, one, two, three, are obviously more critical because certainly this one here, you have to make sure that it's in exactly the right place for the type of unit you're building. If it's for a larder unit or for an appliance unit, then obviously certainly for an appliance unit, it's very much more critical. So thankfully we didn't throw away the little cardboard box because it's got the legs and the leg fittings and all the dowels and cams and screws etc to make up the units. There's two panels that look like this and they've got uh, eight holes in the face and then there's one panel which will be the uh, I say middle piece but it'll fit where uh, in towards the centre of the unit in the position which uh, will be dictated by whether it's going to be an appliance unit or just a simple shelving unit but that will all become clear once you start to read the instructions and then there are the four shelves which we'll put in 
at the end of the process. When you see the number of holes that are in these uh, side panels, I don't know if you actually see that on the video or not, but you can see now why it's essential to read the instructions to know exactly where to put the uh, different fittings. The instruction booklet gives you all the different configurations for whatever you're going to put in there, whether it be a double oven, a single oven, a microwave oven, or in our case we're just going to make a simple open fronted set of shelves with no doors on it, so we're not going to put any hinges on or anything like that, so I'm just going to do this in the most simplistic form. But it'll give you the basic idea of how to put these together. Put all the different dowels, cams, screws, etc, etc, into a clear glass uh, bowl is good, or a clear plastic bowl, because then you can see where everything is. And you don't hopefully lose too much. Uh, there's another packet here which looks as if it's mainly the uh, shelf brackets and things like that, and screwing brackets, I guess, to hold it to the wall. So we'll forget those for the moment, leave those tied up, otherwise it only creates more stuff for you to search through. So forget that for the moment and just concentrate on these. These cams, it's not necessarily that easy to see on the uh, video but on the cams there's a where my left finger is at we'll say north you'll see that there's a little bit of an arrow showing and that is the edge of you can see a little bit of an arrow showing on the top of that cam there and that is the where that little arrow is that's the what needs to be pointing out towards the what will become the side of the unit. You can see that when you look inside the cam, hopefully when you look at them, you'll see that there's a sort of gap there. And so that that gap is needs to be at the angle. We'll pop those into these four holes on I'll call it the middle shelf. It's not always going to be the middle shelf, but it'll be the centre-ish shelf. And then over here we've got the top and the bottom panels and so we only want to put the cams in on these outer ones on the four corners because these here these inner ones are for the feet connectors on the bottom of the larder unit so we don't uh, need to put a cam in those otherwise it will be of no use but you can see where the cams need to go because the camera goes in there and then there's a hole for the joining piece directly above it but on these there's where the feet go there's a hole for the foot to go into but there's no exit point for anything else if you put the cam in a slightly skew or completely the wrong direction you can just turn it around with a flat blade screwdriver until you get the pointy every bit sticking to the side out towards the side where you see the hole so we've now got all the uh, cams in position in that centerish shelf and the top and the bottom shelves and the two bits, the thinner bits, which actually hold the whole thing together. Panels and EE. These two thinner ones are uh, DDs and the two panels at the back there, which is the top and the bottom, are classed as CCs. When you're sorting through your bits and pieces, you, to your first glance, you think these are all the same because they look fairly similar. From a distance but these here on the left which have a thinner sort of screw at the bottom are classed as AH's AH and those are four of those and these here are classed as the B's and they're sort of more the same sort of thickness pretty much all the way up 
and those are classed as B's. So we've now got all the B connectors pushed in to the panel here. And the dowel's here, here and here, and then the metal B connector in there. Similarly in all these, and all the cams are obviously in, with these uh, modern uh, type of connectors, it looks as if you just push them in as far as they will reasonably go into the cam, keeping the grey side out, and uh, then that will then they will gradually tighten up once they go into the main unit. This panel here, which is what I call the floating or middle panel, has the different. Still got the same cams in these four positions, but the fittings that you put into them is the there's four of these which are referred to on the panel at, onto the instructions as the AH. So we've got to pop those in now. Try not to wiggle the camera too much, but basically You can see that that metal end of these particular fittings goes in to the cam and this bit here with the grey grey browny sort of rib on it is sticking out and that will then go into the that'll connect into the side panels. So you pop those in, shiny side down, into the cam. Push, push, push. I've got fairly strong thumbs. Basically, push it down till there's just that bit of threaded bit sticking out there, and you do that on all four of the cams. There's another two lurking down there. So all are now, all four are now fitted into this. Uh, shelf with, uh, as I say, the silver part facing in to the silver cam and the grey browny threaded bit sticking out. They've got fairly strong thumbs so just push them in as far as they will go gently. Um, I think you can probably ease them in if your thumbs aren't so good with a uh, like a little rubber mallet but just be careful and gentle, don't push them too far otherwise they probably won't work and they'll probably break the cams use a little wooden or rubber mallet, plastic mallet, just to knock the dowels in as far as they will go. Now comes the exciting bit when you put the uh, top and bottom panels in. You make sure you align the, uh, the panel with these uh, holes at the bottom of the, of the long panels. Then they should all fit together nicely as long as you've got the uh, dowels in far enough. And make sure you've got this line here, which is where the backing panel will go, lines up, and then hopefully it should all slot together well. If you want to make a more solid job, then you can always uh, use a PVA wood glue to uh, glue the dowels in both sides, and also to glue round this uh, channel where the backing panel fits, that'll stiffen it all up, but just make sure everything's absolutely square and upright before you uh, glue it all together, as otherwise it'll all end up glued and tight, but in the wrong angle. The only downside of gluing the uh, channels and the dowels is the fact that you can't then ever take it apart again should you ever wish to do so but chances are you probably won't want to take it apart unless you've got the uh, centre shelf in the wrong place <clears throat> did I say that out loud? now once you've got your end panel in position I say end this is actually going to be the top panel but with the cams facing outwards and then use your flat head screw, screwdriver like this just to turn the cams in a 
clockwise direction. So as we say, tighty righty, loosey lefty. So tighty righty. Just put the uh, screwdriver into the cam. So it's basically that upper edge there is where the little arrow was on your cam. So you push it in like that and then you just turn it tighty righty. So basically about 180 degrees to uh, in the clockwise direction. So we just turn it, turn, 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 turn. I don't know if you can see that. Then the screwdriver becomes possibly you can see it going flat now. We keep on turning until the other side of this top edge of this blade has come round and then just get slightly more so it just slightly over tighten it but to be honest I'm pretty strong and I couldn't go any tighter than that. But the main thing is to make sure that the both panels are absolutely butted up to each other and sometimes if you haven't got the dowels in tight enough or deep enough that sometimes it makes it a bit more difficult but as long as the dowels are in deep enough uh, with your little rubber mallet or or little wooden mallet or whatever uh, then everything should be yeah should be fine good luck I don't know whether this will make it any clearer or not but basically that's the arrow on your cam which is facing towards the outer edge of uh, the unit so basically when you tighten it up you make sure that the two bits of wood are tight together and then turn it from there and you basically the cam will go all the way to about there or there and when it's really tight at that position which is this position that's shown here on this one then that should make sure that the whole unit is nice and tightly together if there's any gap at all between these two when you turn it up then the connection won't work so it must be butted together like that absolutely accurately not like that otherwise it just won't tighten up properly so we've now got the uh, the top panel attached to the uh, side uh, panel and those two sticky uppy strengthening bits there the what I call the middle floating shelf which goes wherever it needs to go for your particular uh, the type of unit you're making up whether it be a larder unit or a fridge unit or an oven unit or whatever all different positions so you just have to fit that using the useful guy that comes with the uh, with the kit and then that's the uh, base panel which is all nice and snugly fitted and on the other side of that we'll add the feet and that slot is all nicely lined up make sure you get this middle panel here Let's move this slightly in the right uh, position so it's the front edge is flush with the edge of the front of the cabinet otherwise it's the other way around uh, this front edge will overlap the groove at the back and you won't be able to get your back panel in now we're going to uh, carefully slot in the white uh, back panel white side facing in to the inside of the cupboard uh, it's usually a bit of a fiddle getting these in but uh, hopefully once uh, it's in position it'll uh, with a little bit of twiddling you should be able to get the other side panel on so with a little bit of gentle persuasion just be gentle and careful with it and uh, make sure it fits neatly into the uh, slot and then you'll see that there's just a little tiny bit sticking up above the height of the uh, outer outer unit there just probably I don't know maybe
maybe mm, perhaps three or four mil, something like that. If if, if it isn't uh, tightly and tidily into the uh, other groove, then the uh, you'll find it difficult to get the other side panel on. But this is probably the time at which you need to have uh, two people to help. The uh, manufacturers recommend you use two people at all times, which is probably very sensible. But definitely from now on, you could do with two people just to be able to uh, make sure you get the um, backing panel into the slot on the other panel and pull the sides in. But uh, usually, with a little bit of gentle persuasion, you can get it in. But uh, just go gently, gently, steadily, steadily, and you'll be fine. Bearing in mind there's about 16 different dowels and pins to get in the right position, including the uh, back panel into the groove. It's probably much, much easier, definitely easier to do this with two, maybe even three people. So as you can align the back panel into the groove and make sure you line up the dowels, the wooden dowels and the metal connectors. As I say, it's quite a lot of uh, different bits to get in the right uh, positions, but generally once everything fits together all nice and snugly and all the different panels butt up against each other and there's no gaps between the rear uh, backing panel and the unit sides, then hopefully you've got it in the right position. And then just a matter of doing up the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, cams and hopefully you've got a solid unit and you can then add in your shelves and your feet I say feet, legs, feet, feet, whatever. I'm now going to fit the uh, cupboard feet to the bottom of the unit so make sure you put these on the bottom rather than the top and uh, the key to it is that I don't know if you can see there but here, there's a little extra bit that sticks out. Probably see it better there, maybe. So that bit there, which is slightly longer and sticky outy, about as big as my finger, that bit has to go along the edge of the um, unit. So basically, the wider part, which is that sticky up bit goes goes into the hole that you've left and the wider part here is sticking upwards to the side of the unit and then basically that bit of plastic supports this end panel so not only do the legs take the weight of the panels but also it holds some of the weight of the uh, side panel so uh, it's uh, strengthened up it just makes it a much stronger job if those are in that position. You just wiggle them a bit to get them in position tightly and then you just pop those in then with your four screws that are supplied with the uh, kit. So for the avoidance of doubt, four screws in each uh, leg fitting. And remember the other little packet we left at the uh, beginning undone? Well, that's got in it the 15mm screws to fix the legs on and also to fit the back panel to the middle shelf. And then there's also a few couple of brackets there which I guess are for the holding it to the wall to make it a bit more secure. And also there are the uh, little metal shelf brackets to hold the uh, shelves that are in their movable positions. Just looking in the uh, bowl and there are four of these little cornery wedgie bracket type things which are classed as ARs which are used to secure the um, the back panel to the top and bottom and sides of the unit and there are also two spare 15mm screws which you can probably see there which are those are I guess to hold the back panel onto the middle shelf, wherever you decide to put the middle shelf. It may not be in the middle, maybe wherever you want it, depending on what configuration you need for your cooker, microwave, whatever.
Now I'm going to use my clever little Bosch uh, screwdriver, rechargeable screwdriver, to put these screws into the feet. Uh, it's just about the right torque so it doesn't over tighten the screws too much. So that's a useful little tool. If you wanted to do, you could pre drill these a tiny mini bit with a little one or two mil screw um, drill bit if you would drill bit if you wanted to do just a little bit, but this is a very easy to do that. Four screws in each. That one will be in the way. If you go in at a slight angle, you'll find it probably a bit easier to get the get those screws and the screwdriver in. But don't forget to leave your little this little longer bit pointing out underneath the end of this uh, side panel. Sure, how accurately I can show you this, but this clever little bracket from the uh, lard unit I've just put together is designed in such a way that this uh, bit here, which goes into the carcass of the lard unit, is comes up. I don't even see it on the video, but it comes up at a slight angle, whereas the other is pretty well at 90 degrees. So when you put it in, you put it in slightly up, and it goes into the carcass of the unit much more easily but then when you put the shelf on top these two or three these two or three little bits here then grab into the wood and also there's a little pin pricky thing sticking up there which you can't see very easily here but then that basically once the weight of the shelf is on there that goes onto that little pin there and it holds it in position makes it very strong and secure so basically once the weight is on the shelf it goes from that position to that and then that holds on tight to the chipboard i must admit i'm pretty impressed by the uh, quality of this uh, lardy unit it goes together very solidly and it's got plenty of shelves or plenty of adjustment in it so you can fit all sorts of different uh, appliances in it different variations of um, door size and configurations etc etc useful little adjustable feet hiding under there somewhere uh, if you're on a limited budget it's quite often the doors handles and hinges that actually cost the money so if you haven't got little children or things you've got to worry about keeping everything securely stashed away you know why not have some of your stuff exposed At least it gives you plenty of storage and you can see what you got. If you found this at all useful, please do give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe. Then we can continue to help Acorns Children's Hospice, Worcester and Mind. Thank you very much. We're over 200,000 views now since we started in lockdown. So thank you. It's tremendous.